Hello everyone and welcome to Speed Cubing on Emacs. First of all, a little bit about myself. My name is Vasily Schneidermann. Online I go by Vasa Maza. I'm 31 years old. I work in information security and I do consulting and hacking and stuff like figuring out to break into other people's computers and how to secure the systems basically. You can reach me via email. I do have a self-hosted code repository thingy going on. I have a blog and you could find me in some other places on like RC, for example. So about the talk itself, um, I used to be into the Rubik's cube when I was in school. I forgot about it though, because uh, these cubes were not very good, but um, recently I did find some cheap looking cube at the shop did not pay terribly much for it and it was so so much better than my old cube it was unreal and so um this motivated me to get back into this really weird kind of hobby and um for this you need to be like um good at producing a truly random scramble in timing your attempts to get any better it there's of course existing software to do the scrambling for you and the recording and the timekeeping and such, but all the good options seem to be either web or mobile. For example, the SCS timer software or the Twisty timer app on Android. And to my surprise, I did not found a single decent option inside Emacs. So this is basically a case study how to do better. And for this, I wanted to make use of all the cool new Emacs features that appeared, like um, the SVG library, Trangent, the library used for the Maggot style interfaces, and the recently added SQLite mode. And most importantly, it was about having fun. So here's a full list of prior art. I will not go into detail about this, but basically, we have things solving very different parts of this, but not all of it. For example, we have several. We have a timer, we have several solvers, we have some scramblers, we have some whole cube simulators, including a 3D one. We have something for making it easier to enter your algorithms in the notation, but nothing that does all of those things in one package, which kind of surprised me. So I present the WCA prep package. So the name, um, I found it difficult to come up with a good name. And so uh, I, I looked and I saw, well, there's this World Cube Association that holds these competitions where you compete. And uh, they do this for the Rubik's Cube, but also a few others. So there's like a standardized list of events they, they have for this. There is a standard um, notation for this and rules and everything. And uh, the goal of my package is basically to help prepare myself for such a competition. And in fact, a week ago, I went to my first one, which was wild, but pretty cool. So for this reason, I chose this name, WSA Prep, because it helps me prepare for this kind of competition. And this um, limited the scope significantly. So I have a scrambler, visualization of the scramble, timer, and statistics. I excluded pretty much everything else I've seen. So for, for this reason, I only try to focus on some very basic puzzles I can solve comfortably and uh, did not want to do anything else that may complicate things significantly. So no other kinds of puzzles, no simulation, no solving, no exotic events, and no specialized scrambles that are only good for like practicing specific algorithms. So at this point, the organizer should, should hopefully show a small video I've prepared, a one minute video showing how I actually use this to solve a cube and to time myself.
Okay, so building this thing, there were several challenges. The first one was how do I even represent the state of a Rubik's Cube? And for this, there are many possible resonations, no obvious best solution. I did not, well, what helped me was that I did not have to like pragmatically solve this thing. So I picked the easiest possible representation, which is just an every of every single facelet. This for a three by three cube, you have um, nine facelets on one side. So times six sides, you would have 54 elements in this array. So with this representation, it's very simple, but it's kind of weird to do scrambles with this, but otherwise it worked very, very well. In the future, I plan to learn some group theory, pick a better representation, and do this in a much, much more elegant way without compromising speed too much. Yes. Um, once I had a representation, the scrambling itself shouldn't be too hard. And for this, it's um, important to consider that basically, if you do a face turn, you end up swapping some facelets with other facelets. That's that's the easiest way to, to um, think about this. But to determine which one goes into which one's position, it was it was pretty confusing to, to figure this out. And for this, I, I went through a few papers and I found one which suggested to just build a cube out of paper, number every facelet and turn it and keep track of which facelet moved into which position. And uh, programmatically, the um, CL rotate F macro was very, very useful for doing this kind of in place swapping you need for this operation. So in the future, group theory would hopefully, hopefully make this a bit less awkward. Here's a photo of this paper cube I made along with a real cube. And as you can see, mathematically speaking, they are the same thing. They just look very, very different. So the scramble algorithm itself, I pondered how this would even be done. The, um, in the competitions, they do this in a very, very elaborate way. They generate a random cube, they try to solve it. And if it's solvable, they um, use these solution moves to turn into a scramble basically. And they also make sure to, to canonicalize the moves. So if you have subsequent moves that can be uh, simplified, they do simplify these as much as possible. For example, if you have two subsequent rotations in one direction, it's turned into a different kind of rotation. So 90 and 90 equals 180. And the other e scramblers I looked at, they generate random moves, some bother to canonicalize, not all of them. And this one tries to do the best loaf, I think, that is generating random moves, canonicalizing and repeating until enough has been generated. Um, for the visualization, I had to figure out something not too complicated. For this, I tried to figure out where every facelet would end up in the puzzle view when you would unfold it. And for this, um, I did not consider the facelet orientation. This may be important later for some other puzzles where you can end up with very twisted faces, but for simple cubes, it's not a problem. My initial prototype used colored text, but later I used the SVG library. And it turned out to be easy enough to use, actually. Currently, I have hard-coded face color mappings, but I plan to replace this so that theming is possible. For example, if you happen to have a cube that does not have the same colors, color mappings as I do, then you should be able to fix this. The next challenge was to build a in beautiful intuitive UI with Trangent. And the idea, the reason why I chose this is because it would be like kind of self-documenting and uh, Maggot style and everyone knows how Maggot works basically. And since Strange has become part of Emacs, there's really no reason to not try it out. The problem was the documentation is difficult to understand. It's, it's very abstract and high level and it's hard to figure out, okay, I want to do something. How, how am I supposed to do this? I did find Strange and Showcase, which has lots of examples, but they don't really feel finished and not realistic enough. When I tried to use the package, I got plenty of unhelpful error messages when using it incorrectly. I did manage to figure it out, but um, I plan to find more actual examples of it to have like an executable reference basically and, uh, and try to improve my use of it. Yes, for the bookkeeping, I used SQLite. This is a very recent addition to Emacs, it only appeared in the current major version. It's still very early days. I found some 
oddities. One of them turned out to be a bug in a transaction macro. Like basically, if you do an SQL transaction and an error happens, then every helper I found does a rollback on an error. But this one did not. It actually committed on an error. And this this was very weird to figure out. I reported a bug. LA was nice enough to send me a patch. We did some patch review and it, and he ended up fixing it properly. So yes, there's still a lot to be done there. And yeah, the API is very basic. You don't have convenience helpers like fetch the first row or fetch the first value or anything, but they're easy enough to write yourself. And the biggest challenge with this bookkeeping part was figuring out a decent schema, like how to organize the data correctly so that it would not be awkward to manipulate. And with this, you can finally build a package that remembers its state properly and don't have to run into foot guns with um, Lisp style serialization, deserialization. So yes, that concludes it so far. So what did I learn from this exercise? Well. There are still plenty of packages for Emacs to be written. If you think everything you can think of or you could need has already been written, well, guess what? No, there are still plenty of specialized things that could need your help. These cubes do not require advanced mathematics, contrary to what you may think. Yes, you can, you can apply advanced mathematics to them if you want to, but you don't have to. And uh, what surprised me about this is basically um, group theory. I've heard of it before. It seemed to be a meme basically because it has been like mostly Haskell people being very excited about this. And it seems kind of like divorced from reality basically. But this 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 puzzle, it, is, it actually proves that yes, this is, it has its uses. It definitely has. You just have to find the right problem matching it. And yeah. So yeah, um, once I understand it better, the topic I expect to like, write better code. So um, these new Emacs features, they work well enough. There are some rough edges. They definitely need more testing. So please, please, everyone, if you if you write ELISP, please try it as Collide or Trangent or anything else that looks cool and shiny, report bugs, find ways to improve them, anything. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that if we do this, then Emacs will continue to get even better. So yeah, what's next for this package? Well, um, I could, there, there are lots of obvious UI improvements and uh, testing to be done. I basically want to reach feature parity with the Twisty Time app, which this is very much inspired by. I want nice looking stats, like um, graphical ones, instead of just a simple list of times. And I want support for more puzzles, of course, not just the simple cues, but as I progress learning these puzzles, I want to have Emacs supporting me for this. But generally, it's a very open-ended package. And this concludes the talk. Thank you very much.